Hello everyone. Hope you are doing well. I'm Priyanka and I'm Junior Solution Architect at Red Hat. And today I'm going to present a demo on actual container storage deployment. So let's move forward then. We all know traditional storage had many drawbacks. Even if the revolutions are happening in storage nowadays, but there are still many limitations. According to a survey, there are numerous challenges enterprises facing nowadays with their storage like storage isn't big enough, storage isn't faster enough, the capacity problems and performance issues, along with the storage being very expensive and performance or capacities can't grow effectively, causing the scaling issues. Outdated systems which impact the user performance with legacy software pain and not knowing exactly where the data is being used. Lack of resilience, storage occasionally going down, impacting the performance, and so on. But the worst case scenario is data loss pain. So according to a survey, 74% of IT decision makers are worried about their organization's ability to cope with an increasing volume of data. And around 70% believe that their current storage systems will not be able to handle the next generation workloads. Inadequate storage infrastructure is considered fourth out of the top 10 pain points, which made any IT organization believe there are benefits in moving their organization to more agile storage to change the scenario. So here comes in light the software defined storage. The software defined storage solutions satisfy these requirements for performance, flexibility, scalability, ease of use and cost efficiency by separating the management services from infrastructure of the storage media. Software defined storage systems create a single pool of storage for a heterogeneous set of storage arrays and enable administrators to create the virtual storage arrays through the policies. Unlike these traditional storage arrays, software defined storage enables new arrays to be added quickly and easily and administrators can give users self-service tool that lets them access the storage immediately rather than waiting for days or weeks for help from IT. Software-defined storage is a storage architecture that separates the storage software from its hardware. It also allows you to upgrade or downgrade the hardware whenever you want. So basically software-defined storage puts enormous flexibility in your hands. So here is the architecture overview of software defined storage versus the traditional storage. Basically traditional storage are composed out of a dedicated software systems, storage systems. And this is just because there is one controller to manage the scaling, which is why the scaling is difficult. In the traditional systems, the storage components are managed by the storage manager. Different user requests are interpreted using an interface and this interface has to be changed when the data type in storage media changes. This increases the complexity of the system for end users. Due to this, it becomes much more difficult to make any changes in hardware of the system, making it difficult for the system to upgrade. Whereas in the software defined storage, the management is handled by users via APIs. The control layer is the most important component of software defined storage. It interacts with the user management and converts various policies to different system instructions. Application layer is one of the most visible to the end user for interaction. As the user management layer is separated from the control layer, altering the hardware of the system, it becomes much more easier. This is because the hardware layer does not interact with the software management, which allows the efficiency, scalability, and adaptability in the storage system. The software defined storage separates the hardware layer from the software layer, and this model also saves the money as the hardware can be scaled up at any time as per your convenience. The software defined architecture actually abstracts the components that control storage requests and not the actual storage. If you see the diagram here, the software defined storage separates the infrastructure layer from the outer layer. The approach allows the users to make the changes in infrastructure and the software defined infrastructure uses policies and APIs to define the solution in infrastructure. 
which optimizes the system increasing the efficiency of system so to manage petabytes of data at the speed required by today's businesses enterprises are turning to cloud technology to store their data and as a self healing and self managing platform with no single point of failure red hat self storage can significantly lower the cost of storing enterprise data in the in cloud and helps enter enterprises manage their exponential data growth considering all the above discussions red hat self storage can be the best solution as a software defined storage self addresses block object and file storage adopting open source as the new norm Basically it is an open massively scalable simplified storage to handle the modern data pipelines it implements object and storage on a single distributed computer cluster providing 3 in 1 interface for object block and file storage it gives 100% api coverage it runs on commodity hardware it delivers reliability it's highly elastic and flexible it's secure and it's a self healing self managing platform with no single point of failure Let's have a look on some of the best features. Self storage is highly efficient as it provides thin provisioning and inline compression with containerized deployment which reduces the hardware requirements. It's highly secure and as it provides the object level encryption and sophisticated authentication features. Self is able to handle billions of object and performances which grow with capacity. It's It has simplicity and dramatically simplified installation along with the operational monitoring and capacity management which provides full CLI interface and Red Hat self storage gives 100% API coverage. So let's move forward with the actual deployment of Red Hat container storage. The deployment model actually divided into four steps. First step installing the operator second deploying open shift container storage third adding the templates and fourth verifying your open shift container storage installation for publishing the articles so let's begin with the installation first we will look how to install the operators for this we will for we, we will first move toward uh, the actual platform and we can log in to this platform using the credentials once we log in we actually see the window like this now let's uh, so now let's uh, look at the details if we see if we go down here we can see that we are using the latest version of openshift which is 4.7.2 we will now do some environmental check if if we go into compute and if you go into nodes then you can see here six nodes are working three worker nodes and three master nodes so to deploy any storage cluster we actually need three worker nodes to be running now we will install the operators to install the operators you just have to navigate to operators and if you go into operator hub you can see here storage so if you click on storage and if you click red hat then you will see open shift container storage so we just have to install now the operator is getting installed ocs is the operator we are using here for deploying the storage it will take few minutes for the installation you can uh, check if it is installed or not here uh, if you see it's installing and ready for uh, use so we will wait until the pods come up and running so uh, this was the first step of installing the operator as you see it's very easy to install any operator it's hassle free and it's faster so best thing about openshift environment is that you you can decide if and when you want to shut down the system or how long for what duration you want to use the environment so you can set the lifetime of environment 
and in addition if there are any errors in provisioning of the process of OpenShift you will have some ability to tro troubleshoot all your problems by your own so you are not dependent on any technical specialist to handle the environment now let's move with the second step though so the second step is deploying OpenShift container storage cluster so if we go back to uh, the platform you can see uh, the storage container uh, uh, operator is installed successfully so if we click on this you will see the details and if you go into storage cluster you can have uh, the tab to create the storage cluster so if we click here we are selecting the capacity 2 terabytes um, now if we go down there are three uh, workers worker nodes that we can select from so minimum requirement if you read this minimum requirement is three nodes to be selected so we have already selected the three nodes available so if you click next you have to enable the encryption and then next now it's ready for the creation so if you click create you can see you have created the storage cluster so if you see the dashboard here it's you, you can see the two uh, dashboards actually persistent storage and object service so this these two dashboards uh, were added during the time of deployment of OCS as a part of offering we can manage and monitor OpenShift uh, container storage using OpenShift console and if you go down you will see here there are uh, six nodes available and if you can see the five storage classes that we are going to use them for the application deployment and if you see uh, if we have here uh, fs as a file storage and safe rpd and block storage uh, safe rgw along with uh, the nuba object service which is called as the multi-cloud gateway uh, which has lots of features to go into various environments so this was about uh, the second step of deploying the OpenShift container <coughs> sorry so uh, benefit of this stage is it's 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 very uh, simple to manage you can manage and maintain as per you want and it's a self-service provisioning which accelerate the faster application deployment now let's move with the third step of adding the templates so again we are going to um, move toward the platform and now uh, if we change the view to developer we can see here the uh, we can see here the option of adding a project so if you click on the project uh, add the project then from the catalog we are going to uh, search we are going to uh, install a template so if you see in the templates and if I type here rel you can see there are two templates so I'm going to choose the rel postgreSQL uh, template and if you see here you can see the option of instantiate the template so once you click on here you will get to see the details so uh, the size we have selected is one gigabytes uh, and all the other details remaining unchanged so if you see everything is okay for creating the template so if you hit the create button then you can yes so now you can see here you have created the pod so this was about the third stage of adding the template so it was very simple we just uh, instantiated one template for the deployment for the deployment the actual benefit of this stage is it's a it's a gate it enables the uh, routes created to be used by the external client which means that these routes are important as a gateway to publish the articles uh, when the clients are going to use for their website so this is the basic step for uh, creating the root of 
publishing the article so let's move forward with the fourth stage and which is the important stage of verifying your OpenShift container storage installation for publishing the article so again going back to the platform uh, if we go into the administrator view and if you go into overview so go into the details you can see six nodes are running five storage classes and you have actually the seven PVCs persistent volume claims which are the volume uh, that we are going which are the actual storage volumes that we are going to use for the deployment and if you go into if if you go into projects you can search for storage so this is our project OpenShift storage and you can see here there are there is actually one route through which we can navigate to the portal so this exactly is the uh, dashboard where um, applications so this is the dashboard where app, which allows the applications to get published in terms of articles so this is actual dashboard where you can play uh, with the websites and you can make changes as per your requirements so this was all about installation actual uh, benefit of this stage is uh, it allows you to prom uh, it it actually promotes uh, the faster scaling up uh, of the applications and it allows the faster app deployment so you can achieve higher return of investment through the stages so this was everything about uh, today's deployment demo summarizing everything about Ceph storage Ceph is best software defined storage now uh, you have you must have got a clear idea how useful and how easy it to deploy the storage by your own as it's very less time consuming and very simple for the installation using the templates so red hat self storage is a highly scalable simple and secure storage and it's better in terms of monitoring management and also it provides the faster deployment reducing the uptime and operational cost it's it's clearly noticeable that how traditional storage has the option to replace the replace with a new and highly feature and scalable one solution also red hat self storage provides the scalable storage keeping the capex opex cost in line with underlying uh, underlying bulk commodity disc prices so the power of self can transform any company's it infrastructure by delivering extraordinary scalability hope you have liked the demo if you have any further questions or queries you can contact me on the given details thank you so much for your time and opportunity to pre to let me present here uh, so hope you have enjoyed have a nice day thank you